Hey guys, Apple announced today the dates for WWDC and the rules and guidelines for this year's Swift Student Challenge and that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. But hey, if you're new around here, my name is Rodolfo. I won the Student Challenge twice, so this is where these tips are coming from. And in this channel, we talk about iOS development, tech in general, productivity, and everything in between. So if this is something that you're into, please leave a like helps the channel a lot, subscribe, hit the notification bell to get the next videos. And with all that out of the way, let's get started. So the rules and guidelines didn't change that much. I'm gonna try to focus on this video on what's kind of new and what you need to know. But if you want more in-depth tips and if you want to see the playground that I won with in 2019, I'm gonna leave a playlist in the cards and in the description below where you can see the videos. I have an interview with a friend who won four times now and she gives a lot of tips as well. So if you want even more tips on how to win the student challenge, watch that playlist. It's gonna have a lot more information. So one of the changes is that one of the prizes this year, they are calling it an outwear. Um, usually it's a jacket. Uh, and pins and, and the one year of developer program, which remained the same, but I don't know if outwear is gonna mean anything different than a jacket, so that's gonna be interesting to see. But with that said, let's go over the requirements. So to be eligible, you need to be 13 or older, and here is a slight change. They said that the minimum age in different countries may vary, so 16, for example, in some European countries. You need to have a free developer account that hasn't changed and you need to fulfill one of the following requirements. Be enrolled in an accredited academic institution, so that's high school, college, anything like that, or official homeschooling equivalent, or you could be enrolled in a STEM organization, in an Apple Developer Academy, or have graduated from high school or equivalent in the last six months and be waiting acceptance or have been accepted to college basically. So if you're eligible, moving on to more important things, building your playground, it's basically the same. You need to create a scene in Swift playgrounds that can be experienced within three minutes. You can use the, one of the templates that they provide and the submission needs to be individual. You can't submit group work or anything like that, but you can use open source third-party libraries or public domain images and sounds and you just have to be careful that that it is public domain, just be very careful with copyrighted stuff because you don't want to do all this work and be disqualified because you used some Star Wars thing or something else that is copyrighted. Next it says that your Swift Playground must be built with and run on either Swift Playgrounds 3.4.1 for Mac or iPad or Xcode 12.4. If you do it for iPad OS, it needs to be 14.4.2, the OS version, and the Mac OS version needs to be 11.2.3. So be very careful with that. They are going to ask you in the forms whether your playground is for iPad or for Xcode, and whatever you put in there, you need to make sure that it runs on these versions that they ask for. You can choose either the iPad or the Mac. I have no tips on whether one is better than the other. I don't think it is. You just have to be aware that if you need to do something that uses the camera, like an AR kit game or something, then you need to use the iPad because you need the camera. But other than iPad specific hardware, you can use whatever you want. All content should be in English. That's the content inside your playground and the letters that we're gonna get to in a second, but the documentation from the school, that can be in any language that the school is from. The zip file that you're going to submit should be no more than 25 megabytes, so that's your playground and all the resources it needs to run, all the images or videos or sound effects or whatever that your playground uses, that has to fit into a 25 megabyte zip file. And the submissions will be judged offline, so you can't call in an API to get the resources. 
that you're gonna need you need to bundle with your playground so be very careful with that like you can't do any location tracking that requires the GPS and updates the GPS over the internet you just can't use anything that needs the internet it has to be able to fully work offline so the biggest tip that I can give you about the playground itself is that the theme of the playground should be about something that you really really care about what I mean by that is like don't make a game because you think games always win or that you should do AR kit because AR is the next big thing and you want to do AR because other people are doing AR you're gonna need to write a letter and talk about the playground that you created and the storytelling part of it is very important so I think that it is very 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 important that you pick something that you are really passionate about because that shows not only in your work in the playground itself but also in the letter that you're going to write about. Next up we have completing your submission. So these are the letters that I talked about and the first one is to talk about yourself. Just talk about your background and development experience, any apps that you might have in the app store. And even though they say that this is not going to influence the judging process, as I said before, you should think about this in terms of how does it fit into the whole storytelling that you're telling with your playground and all of your letters and how does it all fit together. Next is provide school information. So this is where you're gonna upload your class schedule or some other proof that you're a student, it can be a PDF, PNG, G JPEG, and you need to provide a contact information for a supervisor or a teacher or something like that. And as I said before, the documentation is accepted in all languages. Next is the most important thing alongside the playground, which is the letter about the playground that I talked about. So here you need to talk about the features and technologies that you used in your playground and it needs to be 500 words or less. All letters are 500 words or less. But here's where that storytelling thing that I was talking about comes in. Don't just talk about the features and technologies. Talk about why you created that playground. Why is it that you chose that theme? What do you love about it so much? And then talk about the technology technologies and features that you use to be able to bring your vision for that playground to life. Then it says provide optional information. If you've shared or considered sharing your coding knowledge and enthusiasm for computer science with others, let us know in 500 words or less. Let me be clear about something. There is no optional information. You need to make your submission as complete and full featured as you possibly can. So this letter is not optional. I think it's actually very important. The whole thing about sharing your passion for coding, it's the same thing that I've been talking about the playground. I think they really do take into consideration the enthusiasm you show either for this or for the playground theme itself. And in my case, when I did this, I talked about this YouTube channel that I created this YouTube channel to talk about programming and hopefully help other people that are getting getting started, but if you don't have a YouTube channel, it could be your blog, it could be something you do in Instagram, it doesn't even need to be social media, like some, maybe you help your friends, you teach your friends, you teach someone in your family, just talk about why you got into computer science or into programming, what you love about it, and, and what is it that you do to share that with other people. Last but not least is probably the most important thing, which are the dates, if you create the perfect submission and you miss the deadline you're not gonna have a submission and you're not gonna win so submissions are already open as of March 30th and the deadline is Sunday April 18th until 11 59 p.m. Pacific time and it says that applicants will be able to see their status on Tuesday June 1st after business hours so before they used to send emails, maybe this year they're gonna have something in the website that you can log in and check your status that might 
even be better than just keep waiting for an email that seems to never arrive. Last section is about judging. Submissions must follow all the requirements and you need to accept the terms and conditions. And the submissions will be judged on technical accomplishment, creativity of ideas, and the content of the written responses. So this is it for this video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And if we have enough questions, I can make a Q&A video for next week. If you want more in-depth tips or if you want to see the play Playground that I won with last time, check out the playlist. I'm gonna leave it down below in the comments and in the cards. And if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, it helps the channel a lot. Subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.